so uh, thanks for having me on this uh, Virog uh, Global. My topic for uh, today is the technique of ACL reconstruction. And since we have just 20 minutes, I'll quickly go through how we do an ACL reconstruction. So as you can see, ACL reconstruction surgery is uh, quite simple. Uh, you need to harvest a graft, either the hamstring or the bone, patella tendon bone, take it on the side table, prepare it, uh, drill tunnels at appropriate places on the femur and the tibia, pass your graft in and fix it. And normally the procedure lasts for about 20 minutes, but I think I've overshot it by one minute. Uh, so I think my talk is done. So can we have some questions, please? Okay. <laughs> Now, let us go to this talk on ACL reconstruction, the technique. Uh, we have seen a lot of refinements, modifications, and tweaks in the ACL reconstruction technique uh, from the time late 80s, where we started doing ACLs till now. And uh, this has mainly uh, risen because, because of better understanding of our anatomy of the ACL, uh, because of... Uh, our change in concepts, for example, we were looking at isometricity of the ACL and now we are looking more from the point of view of anatomic placement of the ACL. And because of this, we also had to change some of our techniques. Uh, as we went to the anatomic ACL, we had to shift from the trans tibial approach for the femoral tunnel to the trans portal technique because that gave us the freedom of choosing the anatomy on the femoral uh, footprint without being constrained by the tibial tunnel. However, there were new problems associated with it, this transportal technique. You started getting shorter femoral tunnels and in order to uh, address this issue, industry had to shift or uh, give us additional implants in the form of adjustable loops, which are now popularly used. So there has been a gradual change in our approach uh, in the technique or uh, technique of ACL reconstructions. We also realized that one of the unknown factors of ACL reconstruction, which was responsible for failures, was a biological failure. And we realized that in order to address anatomy, we were ablating too much of the soft tissue, both on the tibial and the femoral side, to view the footprints. This resulted in biological failures of graphs. And hence, today, we have started looking more and more from the soft tissue landmarks rather than bony landmarks. So as you can see in this slide, we are now currently use the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus and a soft tissue landmark, which we have reported as an inverted J arch for our uh, deciding for our uh, on our femoral footprint. Uh, our understanding of the ACL tears have, has also increased. We have re uh, realized that not all ACL tears are the same. You can have ACL tears where a significant amount of the ACL is intact. And you may have to do a single bundled reconstruction. And as you can see here, the Samba uh, dance can be seen when you are doing a single bundled reconstruction. Over the years, we have also seen that we have gradually uh, uh, changed or varied our uh, graph choices. In the uh, late 80s and early 90s, the patellar tendon was the graft of choice and almost touted as the gold standard. We then shifted gradually to the hamstrings in the late uh, half of the 90s. And this was predominantly because we realized that there were significant donor site morbidity issues associated with the patellar tendon. Of course, we learned from failures. And today, in the last couple of uh, years, we have now also looked at the central quadriceps tendon as a graft option in a significant number of cases because we find that the type of collagen that one can get with a central quad tendon is far superior to the hamstring graft. Uh, in our technique of, the AC, of ACL reconstruction, 
we follow the sequential steps uh, so that uh, no step is uh, missed and we try and keep the every step as super simple and this is the kiss principle that we routinely use so we start off by doing a diagnostic round i think the diagnostic round before harvesting the graft is of paramount importance i have seen couple of surgeons uh, miss this step and harvest the graft but i think one can get invaluable information from this diagnostic round one can see the type of acl tear and you know then the graft requirement you can also probe various structures and you can identify associated lesions that may require additional grafts especially on the lateral side of the knee if you had to do a plc reconstruction or a anterolateral uh, reconstruction you may require an additional graft in this case you can see that the deep portion of the mcl can be visible uh, uh, seen and also the type of the remnant of the acl and therefore the amount of graft can be pre decided once you have done this diagnostic round so you have two scenarios in this situation in this case you can see that there is a complete mid substance rupture of the acl there is no stump that can be salvaged and in this case your graft requirement is going to be definitely more you are look for a robust graft then in this situation where you find that there is a femoral detachment of the acl you can uh, trim the nodule of the acl save majority of the remnant and hence your graft requirement is going to be much less and in this case one can even use a doubled or a, a triple semi tendinosis to reconstruct your acl uh, uh, ligament now at this stage one can also assess the notch notch plasty may be required in certain situations especially in the chronically deficient uh, acl where it is difficult to uh, identify the femoral footprint and in these cases notch plasty may be done now harvesting the graft should be done meticulously because you want to make sure that you get the entire width of the tendon as well as the length of the tendon so i like to palpate the pes anserine on the medial side locate the superior margin uh, separate the gracilis superiorly and uh, isolate the semi tendinosis make sure that i remove all the vencula from the semi tendinosis be before i pass the tendon stripper the semi tendinosis uh, quadrupling the semi tendinosis is uh, quite simple but uh, sometimes you all uh, may have to trip, uh, triple the semi t and this is a method by which we can do use a tripled semi tendinosis tendon Uh, in recent years it has been uh, noticed that the hamstring tendon when uh, found to be inadequate may be augmented with something like a polyester loop however one needs to do this with caution as we have recently seen quite a few cases where patients have de uh, developed adverse reaction to this foreign material we have now shifted to the central quad tendon in uh, a fairly num uh, large number of cases where we feel that there is no acl remnant uh, which can be saved the central quad tendon is a very robust tendon and one can get almost 9 or 10 mm uh, width tendon and the length is also uh, adequate the change from the hamstring to the quadriceps tendon has been possible because of newer implant uh, uh, devices like the fiber tag which allow you to give a secure fixation on the femoral side and this is how the graft is uh, prepared so one can see that uh, the robust uh, width and the uh, collagen qual uh, quality of the quad tendon one of the important steps of the acl reconstruction is then uh, tunneling and the commonest mistakes that we have seen is on the femoral side 
as can be seen the femoral tunnel could be too far anterior or too far posterior and hence to uh, make sure that the femoral tunnel is at the anatomic footprint one can use the transportal technique either using a rigid transportal jig however when you use a rigid jig you have to hyperflex the knee and the fat pad may obliterate your vision and therefore you have to end up sacrificing the fat pad when using the rigid transportal jig we have therefore shifted to using flexible reamers and the jig for this allows you to drill the femoral tunnel with the knee at 90 degrees of flexion and the femoral uh, the fat pad and even the ligament to be excised and this is favorable for a biologic uh, acl reconstruction the tbl side uh, tunneling has been neglected or overlooked in uh, many of the talks and i feel it's extremely important to be sure that the femor tbl footprint also is at the anatomic place as one can see in this the tbl tunnel could be too far anterior or too far posterior here is an example of too far anterior placement of the tbl tunnel and you can see that because of repeated impingement the graft has already uh, stretched out in this case the tbl tunnel is too far posterior almost close to the pcl and the uh, location of the tunnel should have been anterior you end up doing a vertical acl which is again biomechanically not right and one can uh, have early failures of these reconstructed acls so to you can also make errors on the tbl side by having a too medial or a too lateral placement of the tbl tunnel encroaching on the articular cartilage and causing significant impingement as well as a painful knee because of inadequate range of motion so when you are doing a tbl tunnel you can uh, take the medial tbl spine and the posterior horn of the lateral uh, the anti posterior margin of the anterior horn of the lateral meniscus as your landmarks uh, if you feel that the tbl tunnel is at the ideal position as you can see here it's at the posterior margin of the anterior horn i like to do serial dilatation in all uh, these cases uh, so we start off with the k wire and then uh, go on to a 7 mm cannulated drill and gradually dilate this opening before we uh, get a clearance the idea behind this is that the tbl uh, side uh, uh, bone is sometimes quite hard especially in young athletes and if you were to drill directly with the uh, wide diameter drills you can uh, cause shattering of the tbl plateau and hence we strongly recommend serial dilatation whenever Uh, you are uh, drilling the tbl side if you feel that your tbl uh, tunnel pin is slightly mal positioned as in this case you find that the tbl uh, the pin is slightly anterior you we keep it in place and drill the second pin so that the second pin does not go into the same track as the first pin and this helps uh, us in correct positioning on the tbl side during graft passage it is vitally important whenever you are using uh, these uh, distant fixation devices like the endo buttons to make sure that the endo button flips properly on the lateral cortex and this can be visualized either from the central portal or from the anteromedial portal and this is an important part of uh, making sure that you have a secure fixation on the femoral side so graft passage should be smooth you should not be struggling too much with passage of the graft otherwise soft tissue grafts like the uh, hamstrings can be easily lacerated and lead to weakening of the graft uh, during passage so this is a very important step so before i after i have done my drilling i also also use a dilator to smoothen the passage on the tbl side so that the graft passage is smooth once you have passed the graft it is very important to have a relook into the knee 
to make sure that there is no debris which is in front of the acl graft as this can lead to a cyclops lesion or graft imp or impingement and restricted extension of the knee and therefore one should make sure that anything in uh, anterior to the acl graft is cleaned up properly this is a small joint shaver so that the graft is not damaged you also extend the knee and flex the knee to make sure that there is no graft impingement before you fix the graft on the tbl side so in short or in summary this is how we do an acl reconstruction we uh, do minimum shaving of the acl stump we use a flexible flexible reamer uh, on the femoral side on the t we do serial dilatation and uh, make sure that the graft passage is smooth and uh, as you can see in, in this video a majority of the uh, acl stump has been preserved see that the fat pad is intact the ligamentum mucosum is still there and that is graft which is uh, inside without any impingement so i think in summary you want a strong graft which is anatomically positioned avoiding impingement preserving biology and it is securely fixed and we tend to call this the abcd concept of acl reconstruction where uh, you are uh, preserving uh, reconstructing the acl at the footprint uh, preserving the stump of the acl having a robust graft which is securely fixed and we also address all the associated deficiencies that may be identified at the time of the diagnostic round thank you very much Thank you.